Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. Have you ever wanted to just paint with some dramatic, glowing color? Well, I'm going to give you a great tip on how to do that with this interesting and brilliant underpainting. If you would, go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you hit the little bell next to the subscribe button, you'll be notified of any future videos I post. This free video tutorial is brought to you because of the faithful support from my patrons on my Patreon page. For $5 a month, you can support this channel and you get extra content. Let's first talk about these products. I love these two colors of acrylic inks. This one is fluorescent pink, and I typically buy Daler Rowney, which is that yellow one. That's Indian yellow, and there's just something magical that happens when I combine those two colors. Now, I have a black piece of foam core board with UART paper. It's a sanded pastel paper taped around with black artist tape. I find it keeps it nice and flat. First, what I do is I add a little bit of pink, and I kind of guess this um, proportion here. It's about half and half. Um, I think I added more fluorescent pink with it. No, maybe not. It's about maybe a little bit more Indian yellow, but I just kind of guess at it. Now, this is not a body spray. It's water in a little mister bottle. I like to mist my surface before adding this. And I like now I'm just kind of like putting drops with the dropper on the surface. It's going to blend so smoothly because of the water application. And I just literally get a brush and start brushing it in. I do often people ask, how long does it take to dry? Well, I get anxious and I blow it dry often. Now, I discovered this technique in a recent video and I literally just wipe off some of the sky to create a little bit of a value study. So I've got land and sky there with just two values. And now, as I typically do, I like to get my darks in. I was using a reference image from pixabay.com of some lovely blue flowers, and I'll have a clickable link in the description of this video, but I was working rather intuitively. I'm not showing my pastels in this, but I was using, I think I used quite a bit from the Sennelier 40 half stick set. I love Sennelier pastels. Now let me talk a little bit about this UART paper. It's a sanded pastel surface, and I love it. I have loved it for years, but I noticed that it has a tendency to curl. And some people say it's in humid climates, which I'm in, in Tampa, Florida area. But I switched to a surface I use now mostly called Fisher 400. It's almost identical to UART 400, but it doesn't curl. For some magical reason, it doesn't curl. So I have been getting that from proartpanels.com. But I had a lot of UART left, so I thought I gotta keep this flat. So this is my new method of how I showed you. It's a piece of black foam core board. I just cut my painting. This is almost a perfect square. It's probably about an eight by eight or nine by nine. And um, I just taped it around the edges with black artist tape. I think it's a quarter inch quarter inch artist tape and it worked great. The other thing that worked great for me, I'm just using a piece of vine charcoal here to just get in some of the flower shapes. Um, but another reason taping it to the board works well for me is because you guys have made some great comments that you really like my overhead filming um, method. And I think it's because I can have the camera literally right over the painting instead of off to my side and you can see better. The challenge with that is I prefer working with my, my surface on an easel. And the reason is because the pastel dust will fall. When I'm working flat like this, the pastel dust just kind of lays there. So every so often I take my painting and I just go outside and tap it off to get the dust off. Well, having it on this board makes it totally easy. I just take the board outside and tap it off. So I thought some of you guys might um, maybe even like to do this little board technique yourself, especially if you have UART paper. I also just used a paper towel to do some blending. There's a neat way you can use it by just folding it, using a corner of it, and then you can fold it over itself to switch colors so you don't um, let your colors contaminate each other. But you can see there's quite a bit of pastel dust all over the place. So this is when um, I have to take it out and actually tap it off. And I'm just reestablishing my darks here. I got in a nice um, muted, a uh, little bit of a value of some of those darks when I blended the paper towel. And this reference image has a very simple composition. This should be a good little lesson for beginners. And if you just have 
a few colors. Okay, you're going to, I'm going to show all of my, I'm praising the Lord right there. I'm listening to some praise and worship music. <laughs> I can't help it. But uh, at the very end of this video, I'm going to show all of my pastel colors that I use for this. I do obviously use a lot of greens and blues, and I use some uh, lavenders in the sky as well. And you'll, and I'm using my finger to blend a little bit there. I'll do that sometimes in a initial stages, but I actually try not to do a lot of blending towards the end of the painting, middle to end of the painting, because they start to blend themselves. Um, so you can have a kind of limited palette of colors to give this a try. Also, as I said, the composition was quite simple, but at the end of it, I feel like it was weighted a little heavy on the left side because of that bank of trees. Now, if I'd have had some of those flowers reaching up higher to the left, I could have balanced it out that way, but I end up actually kind of removing some of those. I don't know why, but I, at the end, I add another distant bank of trees on the left side, and I felt like it, it balanced it out a little better. So I'm actually just going to add some music and let you guys watch me paint. But the point of this lesson is that even if you have limited colors, uh, you can make those colors just pop by putting down an underpainting that really complements your painting and or the pastel selections that you use. And one way to do this, one of my favorite techniques is a color similar to this, which is a golden glowing color. I love the combination of these acrylic inks with the fluorescent pink and the Indian yellow. It's very similar to another underpainting product that I use. I use Golden Fluid Acrylics, and their color called Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold is probably a little more yellow than this that I put down. I really like this orange, though, as well. And it also is a great way for you just to lay down a color and start painting and it's really going to make your painting pop especially if you're leaving some of the underpainting showing through in other words don't cover the whole thing up it still has an influence on your painting believe it or not even if you cover the majority of it up but uh the beauty in it is keeping it really impressionistic and loose and um and letting some of that underpainting peek through also another reason i think colors like this work so well is landscapes are primarily or primarily have a lot of green and blue we've got a lot of greens and grasses and trees uh, not that every scene has to be green grass or green trees and we have a lot of blue in the skies so what is the complement to that color if you get a color wheel a complement to a color is just opposite on the color wheel so the complementary color to greens um, and blues, kind of that cool side of the color wheel, it's going to be warmer tones. It's going to be orangey colors, red colors. I often sometimes will do an underpainting that is more like that fluorescent pink alone. I love pink underpaintings. And another thing I like is to have an underpainting um, that kind of glows through. It's not, it's very transparent. Notice that the surface of the UART paper was kind of, it was light. It's kind of creamy colored, but I chose a product this acrylic ink combined with spritzing it with water kept it very see-through and you're still seeing kind of the glowing of the paper showing through and that's one of the reasons I prefer acrylic inks and the golden fluid acrylic that quinacridone nickel azo gold color because it's very transparent I also for the same reason like to do watercolor underpaintings you could do something similar like this with watercolor because you art paper and also the Fisher 400 paper that I talked about before they are water friendly surfaces so is pastel matte often I'll do pastel I just did a video uh, of some sheep in the sunshine on white pastel matte and um, I did a watercolor underpainting on that so you could you could really probably just get um, some cadmium orange uh, maybe even some quinacridone violet mix those two together with watercolor and that will probably create a color very similar I also like to mix them together on the palette and on the surface not mix them in a dish necessarily like I did sometimes it's fun to spritz your surface with water then say you're using watercolors get some quinacridone violet brush it in and then get some of your cadmium orange and brush it in and let them 
kind of blend and bleed together. It creates some interesting color movement. So you don't even you don't always have to do it solid like I did. But this is probably the easiest way to do an underpainting. It's just tone your surface one nice solid color. All right, have I uh, just totally worn you guys out with that point <laughs> but I do I really love it now I am choosing did I say I was going to add some music I always do that I'm choosing some greens that I just found so interesting and I'm I realized I don't use them a lot this reference image had some of these ochre looking greens often the way that color works um, color illusions, I call them, rather than color theory, is colors usually get cooler as they recede into the distance because of something called atmospheric perspective. There's literally a lot of air between you and things in the distance. That's why mountains look cooler. They look bluer. They look uh, more purple. And things in the foreground are usually warmer. So typically grasses even in the distant fields will cool off, but sometimes they don't. So that's why I always give a little disclaimer when I say uh, things cool off in the distance. I say typically. You've got to keep your subject matter and the lighting, the time of day, things like that in mind. There was something happening in this reference image to where, I don't know if it was a glow of the sun, but it was making those greens to me, in my mind, it looks so interesting. So this big old pastel here is a Terry Ludwig. Uh, Terry Ludwig makes some gorgeous blues. And I also really loved the blue contrast with the orange underpainting. Those are nice complementary colors too. So that just really made it pop. So again, the point of this video is to make your colors pop and get away from using just dull colors. And also, oh, there I am praising the Lord again. And also, um, Keeping your strokes loose. I know because I have so many of you on the Monet Cafe art group, I mean the Monet Cafe YouTube channel, uh, and thank you guys subscribers. We're at 67, close to 68,000 subscribers now. I hope to get to 100,000 before the end of the year. I'm, I'm not sure if we'll make it, but um, so subscribe if you haven't. Um, now I'm kind of dancing with my fingers, but also with my Monet Cafe art group of on Facebook of 15,000 members, I hear a lot of your questions is my point. And a common one I get is, I'm sorry for shaking my camera there. A common question I get is, how do I get more loose and using more color that is not necessarily exactly what I see in the scene? And getting this bold underpainting is one way to punch up your color and really get dramatic color. And using just general color illusion rules, like I say, not color theory. Color theory sounds like school, right? So I say color illusions. Using those general rules um, will help you to be able to bend the colors away from the scene and use some that are I'd had another video just like two, three videos ago where I showed you in Photoshop exactly how it works. Uh, if you keep your value close, you can add brightness or boldness to your color. Often I'll go in and edit out all those little parts where there's a little blank space, like, like you know, right now when I'm dancing with my hands. And I have usually praise and worship music on when I'm playing. I've been loving this one musician. His name is Zach Williams, and Z-A-C-H Williams. And his work is a little bit, hmm, what would I say? It's a little rock. It's Christian, but it's a little rock. It's a little, maybe Southern rock is a better way to describe it. A little leans towards gospel Southern rock and cool. He's just really awesome. He's a cool dude. Um, so I'm often listening to music while I paint. And that's just part of my, um, you know how we say art is like therapy. It's very therapeutic. One of my favorite things to do is to paint and praise the Lord. And when I can do them at the same time, that's really awesome. So I apologize for not editing out a lot of the blank space, but I literally have to take my computer in, my precious MacBook Pro computer where I create everything um, to get it checked out at the Genius Bar at Apple. Um, I had a, uh, what's called, if any of you are familiar with Apple products, I had Apple Care fortunately, so everything's covered, but my battery wasn't lasting at all. And so I got the, uh, I got them to fix that. They put a new battery in. I hated to be away from uh, my computer to be away from me for like three days, but supposedly they fixed it. Well, I got it back and it's not fixed. So I have to take it back in again. And uh, I'm creating this video, editing it right before Memorial Day weekend. So I'm going to take it in in just a few hours. So I'm uh, that's why I'm not getting a lot of 
editing done to this video and you're just getting more of the raw footage and let me know if you if you like just the raw footage with even the little blank spaces of me dancing with my fingers uh let me know it would save me a lot of time uh, but anyway all right look at this blue <laughs> again i'm not adding music um look at this blue next to this orange sky oh my god i kind of liked it without adding any color to the sky just having an orange sky but uh, typically the way skies work is a lot of times there's a little lighter value down at the horizon and sometimes i'll make the lighter area just in a section that I want it to have more focal uh, influence or impact and so I'm gonna keep the lighter values near that bank of trees there so you can see these beautiful purpley colors I'm not worried about smoothing all of this in that's another way to keep your painting looking really loose I'm just kind of scumbling in colors and uh, eventually they all kind of start to work together um, so it was a lot of fun I love the color it's, it's almost like you create a new color do I sound excited when I'm creating this I am <laughs> color excites me um, it's almost like you're creating a new color when you are lightly layering these colors over a beautiful underpainting like this okay I need to take a breath and I'm actually going to add some music but this painting didn't didn't take all that long so if you enjoy this video please like it there I go shaking my camera my um my uh, actually it's my iPhone that records um, if you enjoy this video give it a thumbs up it really does help this video to get seen by more people YouTube will share it their algorithm um, will make it more visible to other people uh, make do a comment leave me a comment let me know what you thought um, you can also now my channel was approved to for you guys to leave a little tip um, a little thank you tip now YouTube set the amounts but it's a, a little button underneath all my videos now that say thanks it just it's, it's like a little word that says thanks and you can give like a couple of bucks tip or whatever and then you get recognized um, your name shows up in the comments for the tip that you gave but don't worry about that what what is really the best for this channel is for those of you who become patrons of mine on my patreon page it's only five dollars a month and not only are you supporting this channel you're guaranteeing that I can keep doing this this is my full-time job my husband and I lost our jobs in 2020 due to COVID and um, so I had to start doing art as my full-time job and it's because of the patreon support that I'm able to keep bringing the free videos to Monet cafe I used to just do it kind of as a side thing so that's because of the gracious and wonderful support of my patrons plus if you become a patron on my patreon page uh, and I have a link for my patreon page at the end of every video and in the description of the video but if you become a patron uh, you become part of the family and we have such a neat community you get to share your work with me I have a homework album you get extra assignments you get extra content extra footage often you get my reference photos and a color guide of my pastels used all kinds of stuff like that so too much to mention here um, but anyway so that would be great if you would like to support support in that way so all right I'm gone now here's some music and I will be back at the end of the video
just about finished at this point and as you can see I added some wispy grasses and I kept it super loose. I didn't want to overdo anything. I give it my signature with a little Prismacolor New Pastel and as I said I'm going to show you my pastels. I, I do this often while I'm painting. I'll just kind of rearrange my palette just to see where all my colors are and the different values. I apologize that I, I have it up towards the top of the screen but I think you can see almost all of the colors that I used. Lots of greens. I divide them by color temperature as well. And here is the final. I really did love the vibrancy of this painting. I will have this available in my Etsy shop, so check that out. I'll have a clickable link in the description of this video. Once again, become a patron if you'd like to support this channel. Um, leave a tip for this video if you like. Just click that thanks uh, button underneath the video. Subscribe and just become part of the family. All right, everyone. God bless and happy painting. <music>